Well, welcome to part one of the Chemistry Chapter 2 vodcast about measurement. The first few slides, please don't take any notes on this. Basically, we're just looking at where did measurement come from and what were the earliest measures. So the earliest weights that people used were things that came from the earth, like seeds and beans. Or you could have used a measurement of length based upon how long someone's stride was or how long their foot was, how wide their thumb is. The cubit, which is mentioned in the Bible, was developed 3,000 years BC, and it's the length of your arm from the elbow to your fingertips. And of course, there were other measurements, such as the Greeks using 16 fingers in a foot and 25 fingers in a Greek cubit. Why did I just zip through that? Because that's pretty confusing. And you know why those systems had to change. Because someone's foot might be a different length than another person's foot, or the length from their elbow to their fingertips might be different. So as trade began from one area to another, you had to find a way to measure things that were universally accepted by all of the parties involved. So what came next was, skipping through a whole bunch of human history here, in the late 1700s, the French scientists developed a system called the metric system. In 1960, a few hundred years later, we came up with a committee to update that system, and it is now called the SI system, or the Système International, or what we refer to as the metric system, which, by the way, the United States, in their own isolated, self-centered way, has not adopted, even though they said they were going to in the 1960s. So why is it used? Now you can begin to write. It's a universal system. It uses decimals and not fractions. So again, the meter stick comes out to spank your fingers if you're starting to write 1 fourth instead of 0.25 in this class this year. Conversions are way easier, as you will see. And oops, we're a little out of date. Uh, there's a guide to converting metrics at that link, but I honestly don't know when National Metric Week is in the year 2014. Go home tonight, see if you can figure it out. Google it, let me know tomorrow. Now, the System International is based upon seven base units, and these are actual objects or an event in the physical world. They stand independent of other units. And the base units are, in no particular order, time being measured in <clears throat> seconds, which we often abbreviate with an S or sometimes SEC. Our length unit of measurement will be the meter. Here's where it gets confusing. Its abbreviation is the small letter M, and there's other things that have that abbreviation too, so hold that thought. Mass is measured in kilograms, kg. <coughs> in chemistry, we don't use kilograms too often. There is the actual physical object, a kilogram, I believe, of platinum at the uh, national standards upon which all other kilograms are based. We'll be using mostly grams in this class. To give you a feel for how much is a kilogram, it weighs about a little over two pounds, and that very expensive device in there is made out of platinum and iridium. So if that was two pounds of platinum, that's a lot of money. Someone can go figure out that too. Guarded in a safe, I think actually right next door to where the vice president lives, and also there's one in France in Paris. Now for temperature, our base unit you might be surprised by is not Celsius, but Kelvin. We will explain that more later. Symbolized with a capital letter K. Not degrees Kelvin, Kelvin. The amount of a substance is probably new to you as well. We call that the mole, not much of an abbreviation there. We will not be using the ampere, abbreviated with A for amps, or luminous intensity, candelas, abbreviated with a CD. We don't use that in chemistry. That might be something more, well, not in this chemistry. You'd use that more in physics, or if you were doing oxidation and reduction, you'd use the amps. Those are our base units of the System International. Now, if you combine these units, you have something called a derived unit. Sorry, the throat's still a little scratchy from that flu this weekend. For example, you can measure the volume of a solid in cubic centimeters, length times width times height, 
and that's a hundredth of a meter, but you have to multiply them by each other. That's also the same as a milliliter. If you have a little cube, that's one centimeter on each edge. For liquids, that's referred to as a uh, milliliter. So the derived unit for volume is actually the cubic meter, which would be a box, which has edges that are one by one by one meter in length and width and height. But for the measurements that we're going to make, we're going to be mostly using the milliliter, which is based upon the cubic centimeter, a little box that's one, one centimeter on each edge. Most of our measurements in chemistry will be liquids <clears throat> and I do need to make a point on this PowerPoint slide here. It says at the bottom, the metric unit for volume is the liter. Can you please write right here underneath this box, a cubic decimeter is the same thing as a liter. Can you please write that underneath this box? And as you can see on this picture, they've taken out a cubic meter box and taken them out a one by one by one decimeter cube from here, blown it up so you can look at it bigger. That's what we call roughly a liter. Take a little corner out of that box, that's a centimeter by a centimeter by a centimeter, and that's a cubic centimeter right underneath here, or one milliliter if you were measuring liquid volume. Doesn't work so well for substances that have irregular shapes. So back to these derived units, here I have a combination of a mass, grams, over cubic centimeter or milliliter. That's a unit of volume. Derived units use two or more of the units that make up the seven base units. Density is a ratio that compares the mass of an object to its volume. To get density, I'm hoping that you've seen this before in a previous class, we simply take the mass and divide it by the volume. In chemistry, that's often grams per milliliter for liquids or grams per cubic centimeter. That's another example of a derived unit. Now pay careful attention to this, the temperature scale that we use in science. There are two temperature scales. The Celsius scale <coughs> was developed by Anders Celsius, a Swedish astronomer he used the temperatures at which water freezes and water boils to establish his scale because it's a really easy scale to do. On his scale, he said, let's let the freezing point of water stand for zero. Let's let the boiling point stand at 100. And I'm going to divide that into 10 and possibly even by 100 different little marks. That's our scale on the right. And as we just said, he divided these into 100 equal units. We call those degrees Celsius. William Thomson, otherwise known as Lord Kelvin, was a Scottish nobleman, apparently, who based it upon this freezing point and boiling point. And why we use that, I'm going to hold that thought for a different date, but essentially recognize that the Kelvin scale is found by adding 273 degrees to the Celsius scale. And notice that the Celsius scale says degrees Celsius. The Kelvin scale, we just say 373 Kelvins. Do something cool in science, you get a unit named after you. So of course, water freezes at zero, boils at 100 on our Celsius scale. By adding 273 to these values, it's freezing point of water on the Kelvin is 273, and boiling point is 373. All right, now as we use our units of measurement, you'll notice that we'll be putting prefixes in front to convey meaning. And those prefixes that we most commonly use, and I would probably go ahead and make a check by these, we use milli all the time, sometimes centi, and sometimes kilo. Most of those others, like micro and nano and giga, we don't use too much. And remember how I said the little letter M is the abbreviation for a meter? Well, the little letter, letter M is also the abbreviation for the prefix milli. Doesn't mean a million, it means one one thousandth, or point oh oh one, otherwise written as 10 to the minus three. Centi means a hundredth. 
Notice that I'm making a distinction between milli is a thousandth, but kilo means one thousand. So if you put a K in front of a little m, it means you have a thousand kilometers. If you put a little m in front of a letter m, it means you have one millimeter, which is one one thousandth of a meter. So as you can see, we'll be using prefixes to convey meaning. I'm hoping that this will be a rerun from a previous science class as well. Now I think this is a good spot to stop as we will do a PowerPoint and also a walk around on how to use scientific notation to make the handling of numbers very large or very small easier to do. On that point, we'll stop the podcast and I'll see you next time.